Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we have a few new items to discuss. We have the two new Tom Ford eyeshadow palettes as well as the new Esam lip palette. So this is the Nuance lip palette. It's really beautiful. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the Tom Ford. So Tom Ford has released two new eyeshadow palettes. We have number 43, Ambrosia, and number 44, Dark Opulence. And this is kind of a, a new eyeshadow formula from Tom Ford. So you can see we have the flat pan it is not the wet dry formula and is not the creme formula either. It's not exactly the same as the previous flat pan ones such as like Mink Mirage and so forth either. So it's a little bit different. They're calling these the runway eyeshadow palettes. And I have to say there are a lot of different textures in here so let's go ahead and start off swatching we're gonna start with 43 ambrosia and the first shade that we have here and I apologize my fingers stained a little pink but um, we have a gold sparkly topper so you can see we have a translucent base here this is essentially just a topper shade and that's what it feels like now this shade here I've used this one quite a bit I've used it with a brush I've also used it with my fingers and it's getting firm in the pan However, it's still, there. there's no difference with the payoff, but just so you know, it, it definitely feels harder in the pan. You can see that this is also, it's not quite as translucent as a gold. We have a very soft, pale pink base here, a little bit of a warm pink base, and there's gold glitter. So you can see that this is not exactly a topper shade, but it sort of is. So, um, then we have two deeper shades here. These are both mattes. So we have a bright fuchsia pink matte. And then we have a deeper, this is actually a really deep like eggplant with a touch of plum. So this is the palette Ambrosia. Now right now on my eyes, I'm actually wearing a combination of both of these palettes. This one again is 44 Dark Opulence. And we do start off with a matte beige shade. This is a really great kind of a base shade to neutralize your eyelids or to help blend out some of these deeper pigments here. This next shade here, you know, it looks texturally in the pan like it might be similar to that in the Ambrosia. This actually has a creamier texture. I would not say it's necessarily a super creamy texture, but it's creamier than that in the pink palette. You can see here that we still have some translucency to this shade. This is not a topper shade, but it is going to have like a lighter base and it has a ton of like a deep teal shimmer to it. Okay, you can see we've definitely got a lot of glitter in there. So, there we go, that's focusing now. So you can see that if you use this with a brush, you're going to get a very, very light sheer layer of this. And this actually works better because it has a little bit of a creamier texture to it. It works better with more of a padding application or using your finger versus swiping on with a brush. Next, we have kind of this dark blue, and this is a matte, but this matte feels different than those in the Ambrosia palette. It actually has a little bit more of a velvety, rougher texture, like think of crushed velvet. That's more what it feels like when you touch it with your fingers. You can see that we definitely have this navy blue, but there is a little bit of translucency to, to this here. So it's not going to be super hard to work with because of that. This last shade here, it almost looks like black, but there, there is, it's pretty much black, but there's a touch of blue in there. And I think it's really hard to see that blue, to be honest. This is a velvety, more creamy shadow as well. But you can see this is black with just the slightest hint of blue. Very, very slight in there. It's like, it's even deeper than, you know, when you have like that navy and you're like, is it navy? Is it black? It's slightly deeper than that. You can really only see the hints of blue in certain lighting. So it's essentially black in that case. So texturally, touching these with my fingers for swatching and so forth, I feel like the Dark Opulence palette has a better texture, but putting them on the eye, they both actually perform very well, which kind of surprised me. So let's talk about the demos and details here. We have eye swatches and a couple demos. 
Now both of these quads have eight grams of product and they are made in Italy. They do come with your traditional Tom Ford, you know, utensils here. And I have to say when I first picked these up and I started playing with them, I was kind of like, oh, I don't really like these. And I kind of put it off for a little bit because I just wasn't really loving them. But I continued to play with them and you know, they are better than I initially thought. I still wouldn't call them a love, but the formula I think is okay. For this price point, my personal opinion is they aren't necessarily worth it for the $90 price tag of each of these. There are, you know, just other formulas that I prefer if I were gonna spend that amount of money and, you know, they're less expensive or like clay to pop. But I have to say that these are better than I originally thought because they do actually blend out fairly well. You know, there are certain shades that I mentioned, such as that teal shade in the Dark Opulence, because that has a little bit of a creamier texture. Same thing with the navy. Those are both a little bit harder to blend than some of the others, but if you mix it with the base shade, it's super easy. And it's actually, it gives you more of a controlled blend. So you're not necessarily going to be able to buff it out and blend out the edges as well, per se, as you might with something a little bit more powdery but it's pretty controlled as to where you go. So you can buff out and blend out those edges, but if you put it where you don't want it to go, um, that's a little bit harder to kind of move around. So, you know, it just, it has a little bit of a tackiness there. Now, that being said, I feel like for the most part, these shades still have a little bit of translucency to them, making them a little bit easier to work with and to play with. Now, as I mentioned, the Ambrosia and the Dark Opulence palettes both feel texturally different. The Ambrosia pink palette, you know, that one actually feels more like the Mink Mirage and the palettes that kind of came out in that collection. These flat pan ones that we have been seeing recently, those mattes, they feel like that. They have kind of that silky powdery texture that sometimes turns out okay, sometimes really doesn't have much payoff. These actually uh, perform pretty well. I am a little concerned about the second shade in the Ambrosia palette, that sort of warm peachy pink with the gold glitter, just because it has gotten so much harder in the pan. So far, Pickup though has still been about the same. It is almost like a topper. It's just slightly more pigmented than a traditional topper, but it has that kind of texture where it feels like you're not picking up that much product. I didn't think, you know, when I first started using it, I was like, oh, how am I really gonna use that shade? But surprisingly, it blends very nicely with the others. If you wanna tone down one of the other shades that you've used, kind of blending that out with your finger using that second shade can really kind of help soften it. Now you are still gonna get kind of that warmer pink tone. And in the demo for today's eye look where I'm using both palettes, you can see that's what I did with that. I used the teal from the Dark Opulence and this you know warm pink from Ambrosia. And I kind of blended those together and because of the textures of those, if you are trying to blend them, it does work better with a finger versus a brush. Um, just because they, you know, that teal shade really kind of stays put where you put it. If you use that warm pink shade from the Ambrosia palette with a brush, you're really gonna get more of a topper effect. But if you want to see a little bit more of that pink base to it, I would recommend using a finger application because you kind of need a little bit of pressure to kind of blend that color out and get that particular shade on your lid. So overall, between these two palettes, I would have to say that they are okay. They are a little different than what I expected from Tom Ford, which is nice, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of surprise unless it's, you know, completely terrible, which in this case is not, I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but I think these are actually decent palettes. The performance of these is actually pretty good. And, you know, I have no complaints actually about the performance, they perform well. I just feel like these particular color stories, when you're going with these bright, vibrant shades here or these deep opulent shades, 
they would have benefited with some lighter, creamier shades just to make it a little bit easier to kind of blend out or lighten some of the colors if you chose to do so. These, in the Ambrosia palette, these two like top shades here, they really do require a bit of pressure to use them in that purpose. And I think it would have been nicer to have something a little bit creamier that was just a little bit easier to use and dilute some other colors. And in the Dark Opulence palette, we don't actually have anything like that. The closest to that would be that teal shade. But again, that has more grip to the eyelids. So you're not really able to use it for that purpose. I love having that beige base in there, but I actually think it would have been nice to have perhaps something even a little bit lighter than that to kind of help dilute it or um, perhaps something maybe even a little pearly, like more of an ivory pearl kind of shade in there uh, versus the beige. Overall though, I think they are nice palettes. They are not loves, but they are likes for me. So I hope this was helpful. If you pick these up, let me know what you think. Let's just do a couple of quick swatches. All right, so I don't have a ton of comparisons for Ambrosia, but I did want to share this Byredo palette. This is Siren, and this was one of the first Byredo palettes that came out. And you can see we do have sort of some pinks and blues here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch the two pinks and the blue so you can see how these compare. But I have to say, I personally prefer this palette and this formula. I mean, look at that blue, that's gorgeous. But you can see that this pink is, they, they, they're more metallic, you know, so it's a different finish, but I do think it is beautiful. And if you are looking for kind of that pink blue color story, I personally, let's just go ahead and swatch the other two shades. Um, I would personally recommend this Siren palette over the Tom Ford. Um, just because the formulas, they're very easy to use. They are creamy, but they also have grip, yet I feel like they blend out a little bit more easily than these Tom Ford ones do. And they're just stunning. Of course, if you are looking for mattes, however, that won't really help. But if you don't mind the change in the finish, I do think that palette is a real winner. Now, as soon as I saw Dark Opulence uh, come out, I wanted to compare it to Metallic Denim. So this is the one that came out Oh, was it a year ago and it looked beautiful but unfortunately this one really does not have um the best performance we're going to swatch this vertically so you can kind of see how that goes but you can see how light that shade is how deep this is um they just it's a wet dry formula which i really like but this palette just really um kind of blends away a bit on the eye. It's not the best. It's not as denim-like or as vibrant as you might have wished it to be. But you can see that this shade here is very much like the navy shade in the Dark Opulence. The color's the same, but in this case, we're doing a matte finish, and this is going to be a more buildable shade in the new palette. So that does help the palette become a little bit more pigmented. With metallic denim, because it is a wet-dry formula, you can use that wet, and that definitely helps with those shades. Um, but again, um, overall, it's just, it's not the best. I also want to take a look at a couple of Dior palettes. So this is Dior's denim. This is the old formula. And we're just gonna go ahead, we'll swatch these vertically as well. You can see we have more of a teal here. Uh, it's got a little bit more blue than the teal in the Tom Ford. We have this light shimmery beige instead of a deeper beige. And then these are our two deeper shades here. You can see this is slightly deeper than this shade in the Tom Ford, but they are essentially the same color. The navy is significantly deeper though in the Dior palette. Now again, this is the original formula, which I absolutely, I love this palette from Dior, but I also have one of their velvets and this is not really going to be a close match. We're just gonna look at the blues here. So these three are blue shades. So let's go ahead and we'll just swatch those here. You can see we have more of a powder blue, a soft navy and a deeper navy, but you can see how that color story compares. And again, the Tom Ford definitely has a little bit more green in there and the blues are gonna be a bit deeper. 
I also wanted to take a look at the new YSL palette number 900. This is their blue. So they've got this really soft green shade here, which honestly, you know, is, I actually would love to see that to be a little bit deeper. We have a black here with some blue glitter and a brighter blue, but you can see that that is going to be very different from the Tom Ford, which definitely has more green in it. Whereas this is going to be more of like true blue powder blue and so forth. The last thing I wanted to look at, this is the new Suku 127 palette. And I just wanted to compare the pink here with the pink in the Tom Ford. So you can see it's definitely more muted than this. It's more like if you were to put these two shades together and they were a little bit deeper. So that's the Suku pink in 127. So I hope that was helpful. And let's go ahead and move on to our next product. And that is the Esum Nuance Lip Palette. The Esum Artistry Palette number 10, which is the Nuance Lip Palette. This was actually gifted to me from Esum. And I actually do have their two eyeshadow palettes as well. I filmed a video on that actually a couple weeks ago and I just haven't had time to edit it. So that is coming up very soon. I purchased those and I'll have a full review of those. Uh, up very soon. But the Esum lip palette does have the same type of packaging. You can see, I really like this packaging by the way. So this pulls off completely if you'd like. And then you can see this part where it says Esum here. That's gonna go into this notched end here so that it can lock close. These are made in Italy. We have 15 different shades here. So I think that's really incredible. These pans they do come out and this actually can slide out as well so you can read the names a bit more clearly and you can also pop them out just by lifting this through so they are magnetic so you can rearrange them if you'd like into whatever order you want and i have to say i think it's a really smart packaging design i really like this so this particular palette let's go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and swatch everything now the texture of these, these are a thin hydrating formula. We start off with kind of this like warm nude peach and we go to something a little bit warmer with a little bit more orange. And if you look down the rows or <laughs> down the golems, you can see that, you know, these are kind of your nudes, your oranges, your like movie reds and brick reds and so forth. Then you've got your pinks and your purples. So it does kind of, group in column and then in rows it groups by depth of color so lighter mid-tone deeper shades so let's go ahead and continue now this third shade here you can see this is a little bit more of a warm rose like a warm tea rose and then the shade next to it we're getting a little bit cooler this is still a little bit of a warm pink but it is cooler than what we were looking at before. And then, I don't know if you saw that, but this, if you're using your fingers to swatch it, sometimes my finger gets stuck on there and the pan comes out. So just something to know, honestly, when I'm using this on my lips, I just use a lip brush instead. Uh, but for swatching purposes, it's easier to use my fingers right now. And you can see here, this fifth shade, and by the way, these are all numbered one through 15. Uh, this is going to be a, la it's like a lilac shade, you know, where you've got a little bit of pink in there, a little bit of purple. So this is our top row here. You can see we go from warm to cool. Now moving on, shade six through uh, 10 here. This is gonna be our deeper nude shade here. It's really more of a caramel. And then we go to this coral. I mean, look at that. That's a really pretty coral shade. I think it has slightly more orange than a true coral here. This shade here is actually one of my favorites. Look at that rose. It's like your mid-tone reddish rose shade. I really like that one. And then we have this beautiful pink, just kind of your classic pink. And then this one here is like a mauvey purple. On my lips right now, I have this shade mixed with this lighter pink shade. So those two shades are on my lips, but my lips are a little stained from lip swatches. So just something to note. 
Now, moving on to our bottom row with our deeper shades, this chocolate shade here, you can see there's a bit of red in there when you brush that out. It's like redwood. And uh, I think it is like the perfect fall shade. And then we have more of our vibrant orange based red. Really beautiful, great summer shade. This red here in the middle you can see we have a blue base to it so this is going to be a cooler shade and then we have this really bright barbie pink this is a shade that really stains my lips so just a heads up and then our last shade here is going to be a purple with a pink base to it it's really more of a berry but it's got a little bit more purple think of um uh, a little bit more pink than boysenberry so that is the Nuance Lip Palette. I think it is an absolutely stunning collection of colors. Really like how they went with this, how they designed it. So we went from warm to cool, from light to deep. I think that was very smart. And I'd love to see some more palettes like this. Let's talk a little bit about the palette while we look at the lip swatches. This palette is talc-free, vegan, non-toxic, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. There is a level of 1% hyaluronic acid in there to help retain moisture and condition your lips. I can definitely feel that they are hydrating. It goes on very smooth. Feels a lot like a tinted lip balm, but it dries down to like a semi-matte finish. And I'd have to say it's very comfortable, very thin and lightweight. The lighter shades, you know, you're gonna have fading from them a little bit more easily, of course, than the deeper shades. Some of those deeper shades really do stain your lips and that lip stain can last pretty much all day on your lips. So, you know, if you are using a deeper shade, even if you just wanna stain there, you could just pat that on lightly and you're gonna have pigmentation for six to eight hours. You know, the lighter shades though, you're looking at more mm, two to four hours. So it kind of varies depending on the depth of color uh, because you are looking at the staining ability of those as well. Now, according to ESUM, it says pigmentation can be built up from a sheer lip stain to full coverage. I would definitely agree with that. And your top row is your neutral nude shades. Second row is classic lippy mouthy tones. The last row is the bolder signature colors. And I have to say, you know, one of the things that I typically don't love about lip palettes is a lot of them always use kind of the same basic colors and you can mix and match to get what you want, which is a great feature, of course, that's kind of why you would buy a lip palette. But what I like about this Eason lip palette is they didn't exactly follow that. Yes, you've got some classic shades. You've got your orange red, you've got your blue red, you've got some nudes and so forth in here. But what is special about this really are the nuances in these lip colors. And a lot of lip palettes don't have these purpley shades. You don't have, you know, they, they're kind of more like your primary colors, whereas these are really more of secondary shades. So if you're thinking about like actual like color theory and so forth, you know, or, you know, just think about crayons. <laughs> so our primary shades, we're looking at like the red and the yellow and the blue and so forth. And how you mix them, you get your different colors. I feel like every lip palette uses essentially those primary shades and you have to make those secondary shades on your own. Whereas this one, you know, we do still have some signature shades in here, some regular classic primaries, but a lot of these are already pre-mixed to some beautiful secondary shades that you can then use either the cooler side, the warmer side, the more neutral side of this palette to mix and get exactly the shade you want. But I think that's what's making these colors special. You know, you already have special shades in here that you can then mix and match to your own perfection. But yeah, I would have to say that this lip palette is definitely one that is great to have on hand. If you have any lipsticks in your collection that you feel, oh, this is just a little too cool for me, or oh, it's a little too warm, I can't really wear it, and you're like, what am I gonna do with this? Now I wasted my money. Well, that's why lip palettes like this are so important. You can really use these cooler shades, the warmer shades, the neutral shades, kind of mix those with them to get those other lip products to work well also. One of the other great things that I really like about this palette is the texture. This semi-matte finish is really beautiful on the lips. It stays put fairly well. Again, you can get the 
pigmentation to really last all day uh, if you're using those deeper shades. But this formula also is thin enough that if you layer it with a lip gloss or something with sparkle and so forth, you can, you know, have more variation on your lip colors even with that. And, you know, you are not affecting anything with this particular formula. Uh, it, everything has performed really well. So I would have to say it's a really great palette. It retails for 80 US dollars. And I also wanted to mention that I have been testing these lip shades out as blush and today i used the uh, shade number five as blush with a little bit of number four as well and these blend out very nicely because of that satin matte finish they are not sta uh, sticky or tacky at all on the cheeks and they really have a lot of longevity to them so although on your lips those lighter shades might kind of fade more quickly on my skin it actually lasts all day i you know obviously i don't have things touching my skin as much as you know my lips so they really do last all day they give you a really beautiful satin matte finish on the cheeks as well and you've got great shades here to mix and match so i really like using this palette on the cheeks as well as the lips so let me just share with you the shades that i have been wearing and loving the most from this palette so this light pink and the light purple so numbers four and five i've been using a lot I've also been using this one here in the middle, which is going to be six, seven, eight. And then also number 10 here. And then this one here, which is number 13, this red. Those are the shades I've been using the most. I feel like this chocolate shade number 11 is one that I'll be using a lot in the fall as well. And I really do love being able to mix and match these shades and pairing them with the Esom lip liners is also great. If you haven't used the Esom lip liners, I've talked about these before. This one here is my favorite. It is the shade Blushed. I'm just gonna share this one because I always have this on my vanity. But what I love about these is they are dual ended. So you have one shade that's gonna be cooler and then the other side is gonna be warmer. So you can see we have this nice rose versus a peach. And, you know, I have to say, I use this one all the time. What's great about these is that they are waterproof. So you can put on the lip liner, you can color your whole lip with it. You can put on a gloss. You've got a long lasting lipstick. <clears throat> if it's summertime, if you're swimming or anything and you have the lip liner on, you can color your lips. It's waterproof. It's not going anywhere. It's not budging in a rainstorm. You know, they hold up so well. So these are actually one of my favorite lip liners. So I definitely wanted to share those with you today. They've got some really great colors and some of them are very complimentary to the shades here in this palette. Just a quick look at a couple other pencils. This one here is uh, called Plum and we have kind of this, this is also really more pink than plum, but there is a bit of plum in there. So it's kind of almost a mauve. And then we have this deeper eggplant purple. And you can see how well these shades can really go with the colors in the lip palette and kind of help change things as well. This one here is called Brazen. And we have kind of this bright coral and a bright Barbie pink. Hey, look at those. So again, let me go ahead. I'll put those near these shades here. You can see this is going to be a little bit cooler in tone than that in the lip palette. And this orange coral shade reminds me of this, but it's got a little bit more red in there. So you can see that, you know, these lip pencils, they complement and they go well with a range of colors, but they are not going to necessarily be a dupe of any of the shades in the lip palette. Those are all of the products I'm featuring today. Overall, in summation, I'd have to say that the Tom Ford palettes, I think are okay. You know, they, they're, they're middling for me. So would I pick them up again? Honestly, I probably wouldn't because those are not necessarily colors that I would get a lot of wear out of. Uh, if they are colors that you would use a lot, I think they are, they're nice. They are not my favorite formula, but it does come down to personal preference. They perform well, so I would give them an okay grade. 
And then the Isam Nuance Lip Palette. I have to say, I really love this. You know, we all know here that I absolutely love lipsticks and lip products. I don't typically love lip palettes because they can be messy. There are a couple that I've loved historically, but I have to say this one has the best colors of any lip palette I've ever purchased. Really, really love this. So I would highly recommend the Eason Lip Palette, whether you want to use this on its own or mixing it with colors you already have in your collection to enhance or to make things work that don't already. I think this is really sort of one of those must have products. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts, whether you've tried any of these and thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day.